Hey guys, it's Trice here, back with Automation, the Car Company Tycoon game, and what you're seeing right now is one of my latest builds called the Meta Scepter EX. This typical subcompact hatchback was popular among many Americans due to its practicality and fuel mileage. With this specific model, the Scepter, some young and aspiring tuner decided to heavily modify it to make it fast and dangerous. On top of the engine modifications, the owner did not add any aerodynamics because that ruins the purpose of what a sleeper car is all about. Anyways, I'll explain the details of this car throughout this portion of the video. It has a lap time of 1 minute, 24 seconds, 38 milliseconds at the quote-unquote Top Gear test track, and 2 minutes, 19 seconds, 5 milliseconds at the automation track. It has a top speed of 194 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 in 5.59 seconds. The vehicle's engine is based on Honda's IV Tech K20A1 that's been modified to produce 340 horsepower and 293.5 pounds feet of torque. It has a fuel efficiency rating of 14.4 miles per gallon and weighs 2,910.4 pounds, which equals to 1,320.2 kilograms. And now, let's go over the specs of this vehicle. In terms of how I made the sleeper version of the Scepter, the panel material will be made out of partial aluminum with a monocoque chassis made out of AHS steel. With a front transverse engine placement and the front suspension uses a McPherson strut and the rear suspension uses a multi-link suspension setup. For the engine and ignoring the freaking VTEC cover which is a body down off the steam workshop which you can check it out. So we're using an inline 4 engine made out of cast iron with the bore and stroke each set to 86 millimeters, which gets the engine to around 2 liters or exactly 1998 cubic centimeters with a dual overhead cam 4 valve made out of aluminum. For the internals, starting with the balance shaft, we got ourselves a balance shaft to really improve the crankshaft, which that crankshaft is made out of forged steel, with the cow rods at a heavy duty forge and the pistons at regular forged with a plus one equality to improve the RPM stress. Well, the tolerance is for it to be specific. For the compression, it is set down to an 8.7 to 1 ratio, with the cam profile slightly increased to a 49, the springs and lifters set it to quite a stiff level to a 71, and we got VVT at all cams with the VVL and its VVL profile at a 68. For the turbocharger to really emphasize this update, we got ourselves a single turbocharger with a smart boost setup with the inner core set to 774 horsepower. Which wears the turbo? So we're using a variable geometry ball bearing setup for the turbocharger with the compressor size set to 60.5 millimeters. The turbine is set to 44.4 millimeters. The trim at a 38, and the max boost at 18.9 PSI. For the fuel system, we're using a multi-point EFI single throttle setup with a performance bid intake running on super fuel, with the fuel mixture set to an 11.7, the ADH timing set to a 75, and the RPM which set to the real life rating of 8,000 RPM for this specific engine. So last but not least, with the exhaust and everything, so we got ourselves a short cast headers with a single exhaust thanks to a being an inline engine, with the exhaust diameter set to a slightly suggestive 69.8 millimeters, which is a really nice number right there, which that equals to 2.75 inches. And of course, no cats, no mumpers, because that's what sleeper cars is all about. And let's see if the sleeper car engine can hold up by doing a quick engine test right now. Looking at the performance graph, you can really tell where VTEC kicks in, yo. For the second half of the vehicle with the drivetrain, so we're using a front-wheel drive setup with a manual 5-speed with the top speed set to 199.4 miles per hour, which we do get quite a bit of wheel spin in the first gear and second gear, but in Beam and G, well, it depends on that, folks. And of course, at a geared LSD to slightly reduce the wheel spin in both automation and a bit in Beam and G drive. For the tires, we're using some radial sports compound tires with the tire whip set to 215 millimeters for the front and back. We're running on some 16-inch rims made out of magnesium, because why not? 
for the brakes, well, first of all, I set the rims to a transparent color. So for the brakes, it's kind of weird how it's set up. So we got ourselves a vented three-piston brake with the size set to 310 millimeters with the force at 110% for the front. And the rear is also a vented disc but with a one-piston setup with the size set to 230 millimeters with the rear force set all the way down to a 50% and a slightly adjusted pad type to a 60. Well, brief look at the graph here. Well, the front, it seems fairly legit for the brake force, but the rear, it seems like you have to use drum brakes because, well, so it's the point where that wants us to put it as, but on top of that, with the sportiness brake fade, you're at a 9.2% uh, right here, but for a vented disc, at a 1.3, which that's not bad. So for the under tray and all that good stuff, so we got ourselves a semi-clad under tray, which you cannot see. Brake airflow slightly adjusted a little bit. And for the interior of the vehicle, so we got ourselves an interior. Pretty half decent one, to be honest with you, without a rear view mirror because, well, Modders need to really kick in, yo. So since we got the interior in place, we got ourselves a standard type of interior with a CD player right here, which is also standard, not premium, luxury, or all that good stuff. And for the safety and everything, so we got ourselves a regular hydraulic power steering with ABS brakes and standard issue 1990s safety standards. And last but not least, with the suspension and everything, we got ourselves some standard springs of gas bound tube dampers and semi-active sway bars running on a slightly modified normal preset. All I did was drop the right height a little bit and improve the dampers by like one click or something. Despite a handful of problems on here such as the rear brake for speed too high, wheel spin issues, front clearance issues, roll angle, wheel spin, brake fade, engine being full, and more clearance issues, let's go on over to BMG Drive to see how this car performs. So here we are at the map of West Coast USA and ignoring the traffic on here, let's take a brief look at this vehicle here. Well, first of all, at the back end, um, what the hell happened with the text right here? We got black text up in here and some, hold on, is that some ghosting on the font here? It's like it tried to imprint itself out of the car with the word Scepter, the model name, and right next door with the trim, which is the mid-level version of the EX. Trying to like play out like Kia, how they got like whatever X, this X, that X, and whatever. But that is pretty weird. Not only that, same thing with the logo, it seems like it's been blacked out and embroidered quite a bit up in here. So in overall with the vehicle, not too bad of a subcompact hatchback with the rear of the vehicle, sides, and including the front here with this loud ass engine, which you can hear in the game right now. With the front, I try to somewhat mock between like a Mazda 3 or something and a little bit of original styling with the front, especially at the top of the grill and went went like a cheap old mods of three almost borderline mods of mods of speed below here the bomb part of the grill so right now we're going to be doing our basic performance test with this vehicle for our three performance tests the first one we're going to be doing is a zero to 62 acceleration test next would be a 62 to zero brake test and lastly a top speed run which i guarantee this vehicle here being at a top speed of around 200 miles per hour of a 340 horsepower engine you could have a chance to reach the top speed but there's a possibility but who knows so right now get ready to hit the gas pedal to start our 0 to 62 test now accelerate weak acceleration but the turbo will fill in right there going into second gear and not even close to our automation 0 to 62 so 0 to 62 in 6.98 seconds of 300 feet exactly wow 300.00 feet that is a first, so let's break a little bit Get on the cruise control, and it's showing 61, so i uh, take a gamble break now. It'll probably show 61, but who knows. No, it didn't. 62 to 0 in 2.46 seconds of 105.55 feet. Again, almost like the same amount of, like, distance cover for the brakes and, like, the speed, exactly 300 feet, but this guy 105.55 feet with a reasonable amount of distance and time cover, which seems pretty good. So for a top speed run already in effect, we're about to breach the toll boost at 6.66 seconds, 294 feet. So better distance, better time with the 0 to 62. I'll count that. So past all these cars here, they're staying in the left-hand lane, the passing lane, and we're gonna be going into fifth gear right now. 146, Hopper. Doppler radar. Congratulations, Hopper, for ruining my career. Well, it did reach top speed. Let's see the damage and Phil Swift, help me out. All right, let's get a semi janky into your view and see if we do get top speed. So we're going to pay attention to the road a little more, maybe less on compensating. So 160 miles an hour. We're about to reach the exit coming up. So it appears to be a no. Let's find out. 180. Going to swerve. 
180 according to airspeed, but we're getting all that wheel spin showing 187, so nope, failure. Crash there. If you're in the interior, there goes the dash, and we got nothing. Absolutely nothing in the vehicle except for the back passenger seats. Wow. <laughs> One time I got stuck here, crashing at the tunnel here in this map. I remember getting the vehicle stuck at, like, uh, right here. It was just, like, emergency entry exit door for, like, workers or something like that. This little emergency door here. I got stuck at a door, and the body was, like, completely warped out and everything. So taking a look at the aftermath of destruction of the vehicle at the closed, well, semi-closed portion of the highway as traffic comes. So really smoothed out the front left portion of the vehicle. You got the front end pretty good, and then just, like, smooths out right here. That is weird. So you got that. Left side of the vehicle, it retains most of its integrity. The rear end, not, uh, not that damaged. Right side, almost undamaged except for that wheel caved in right here. So right now, let's do a time trial run. Stay on this map here. So go to main menu and go to time trials and stay on the map like I said. It's going to be a racetrack, the one with the chicane of long race circuit 2. And we're going to be doing two laps in the noon hours with the seer vehicle. So take you to the start and finish line right now. So here we are at the start and finish line. We're a little bit off-centered from the little grid position grid thingamajig right here. And we got the vehicle right here in freaking Nissan Sunburst Orange up in here. So let's get ready to start off this year time trial of two laps in three, two, one. Ignore the little speed wind thingamajig and go. There goes all that wheel spin. Shift. And a bunch better zero to 62, but we're kind of going a little bit downhill in 6.1 seconds. That dip was real, folks. So, 6.1 seconds of 280.39 feet. Seems okay. I mean, the vehicle is modified, so what else? I think coming back to this vehicle in automation, I mean, look at that dip. Is it because of how strong the front brakes are or what? I mean, these are like 300s in the front and 230s in the back. Let's see. Try this here. I mean, look at that dip. 600s in the front. Mid 300s in the back, and that was a poor driving line right there. It's like that driving line always gets me somehow. It's like I always go slow to the point where I'm like making a typical left or right hand corner or something. And how right here, this curve 70s don't fight hard and a little too fast. I admit to that. And now we got the chicane up at head, so let's break now. Moderate brakes, still hard on the brakes. Come left, and a little bad driving line, come right. Moderate throttle and out. I could improve on that. And how about here? Hard on the brakes. Thousand degrees. Front brake fading, but it seems like the fading helped cool down the brakes. That's weird. Yeah, so even coming back to like automation, like if I would improve this vehicle, maybe a little bit of suspension, like drop the ride height just a tad and maybe stiffen the sway bars to the point where we're not rolling as much. As we can see, we kind of get some of that, whoa, body roll up in here. As you can see, we shifting left and right this vehicle, which is not that good on like on a racetrack like this. Coming into our first lap, we got ourselves a two minutes, 25 seconds, 957 milliseconds. So let's begin to break here. And continue on, fades with the second lap. Let's see how we'll do right here. Our split times, it seems like we're doing pretty good on a five second split difference. More of that front brake fade. Uh, could have put a tad more uh, brake size maybe, or cooling or what. I mean, these are vented disc brakes. It'll help cool down the cars from brakes a little bit more compared to a drum brake or a solid disc brake. All right, let's cool down here. Moderate braking. A little bit heavier, moderate, even moderate to moderate heavy braking, we still got that brake fade and that beam and G upshift and downshift. So coming up to the line, pretty good driving overall, the second lap of a time of 2 minutes, 19 seconds, 687 milliseconds, of a total time of 4 minutes, 45 seconds, 643 milliseconds, which puts us in first place of this year course. I don't know, that's a shocker. I normally do the one without the chicane, but with the chicane, I think it's my first time, looks like. So go to free roam, crash out somewhere is like straight ahead. Straight ahead at a speed of 139 miles per hour. Let's slow this down, get a camera going, and see what it'll turn out to. So 16 times, hide it, go. There goes all the debris, the seats, the dashboard, the plates, the this and that, and we got the tire all free, a uh, tires all free, and intercooler exposed full time. And like that, we have killed the engine. Thankfully, we did. And there goes the tire just rolling along. Let's just, uh, get, get some distance and yeet the bitch. Let's see. 
Uh, full force, yeet. Goodbye. Take that dude down to a tire recycling center. So take a look at this vehicle here. We got the engine completely exposed. Exposed like a freaking crappy GT player, NBA 2K player, an NFL player, or whatever. Not only that, we lost a little VTech badge thingy like we got automation and a BMG. Oh, whole different result. That kind of sucks, but I'm okay with it. So, inner core exposed, engine exposed, the car's moving on its own somehow, and we got this completely mangled up. No matter what angle you're looking, from the right side, not so much on the rear side, left side, and definitely the front side. And taking a brief look at the interior, we lost all the back seats, the armrest again, including, uh, we didn't even lose the pockets, the little door storage pockets, which is a first in this building series of automation, but, wow. So for the final part of the video, let's go back to the map that I haven't played in a very long time thanks to a recent update of Leap of Death. So let's take it to the top of the map right now. So here we are at the top of this legendary map, so it's accelerate right now, get some turbo lag of that eBay turbo, burp and burp goes the freaking car, and 0 to 62? Yes we do, 6.9 seconds, it's a pretty nice number, 314.36 feet. That's not bad, so here we go, face planning. We're gonna roll this boy, are we gonna go roof first or what? So let's not do that, so let's slow this down, way down, hide the UI, camera as is. Damn, son! You got spokes, so the engine is still working despite that type of impact. Are you kidding me? So full time it all the way. That impact still... <laughs> engine still works despite that impact. How about this impact? Main engine broken. Thank you. That was more like a ramp down, and there goes the engine doing some that ninjutsu type of stuff, and really taking that into effect. Look at that. It's spinning around. It's not detached, which is kind of weird how this game behaves with the engine from an automation vehicle, but... Look at that thing go. Brake testing effect, who even cares about that? So, gonna go... Well, we didn't go down, we smacked through that side of the cliff face, so are we gonna go down on the way? It seems like we are. So go down the water, splash, there we go, and... Is that smoke all debris or something like the vehicle? Let's see, there's some smoke there, or there was smoke. Oh yeah, so you see the little nodes there? That's the debris of this vehicle, so yeah. That is interesting. Bring the vehicle right here. And the vehicle was still in motion, so, oh boy. So, it's been a while since I've been this map because of this recent update, fixing the textures, finally. I tried doing it myself, but I kept screwing it up, and I just gave up on it, so I kept doing Leap of Death or Car Jump Arena. But finally, this is back into its roster. So, brief look at this vehicle. We got everything at every angle completely messed up up in here. We got some loose and sharp polygons to the point where this became a soapbox-like ramp derby card you see at Boy Scouts or something, or your freaking YMCA, whatever. Uh, type of community service gym thingamajig. The shape of it looks like a goddamn cheese wedge. Look at this, man. Okay, for the final part of this video, which hopefully I still got this, is that for this part, I'm gonna accelerate as so and get a high speed launch going by saying how fast I can go, then freeze physics, go to free cam, and then F7 myself at like right around here, like the very tip top peak of the of the map here, and I get ourselves back down to this crater to get an all land crash going. So it's unfreeze physics and hit the gas right now and see how this will go. So I'm gonna accelerate as so, we got a little bump here. All right, good. Got a little bump there, and stop. 79 miles per hour. Take it to the top right now. So here I am approaching to the very tip top of, like, the peaks of the ramp here, of the, of the, the map. Get F7 it, and then unfreeze physics now. And 79 miles an hour launch, and inbound to the crater yet again. Instead of the pool, we're going to the crater, and we're going to do this full time as is. Like that type of hit, which the engine is still running, and that is pretty weird. So a speed, 114, engine still runs, engine still runs despite that hit, face first, still engine running, which, is this gonna, it died right there. I was about to say, will this engine keep on, wow, we got stuck there, keep on going until we get to the very bottom of the crater or what, but engine is destroyed, we got a sharp loose polygon about to free itself here. 140 mile an hour impact right there, and tire deflated. Well, let's just uh, hide the UI as is all the way. So get another hit right here, and right there, and we're going to be off-center, it looks like. So bang right there. Yeah, we're going to be kind of off-center, but hopefully we still got the momentum going. We got, like, I believe this downhill... Oh, we got a crevice. It's going to screw me up. Yep, that crevice is probably going to keep us 
from going even any further, so I might have to free cam and yeet this son of a bitch, so... Yeah, we got- we're rolling. We're rolling still slowly, and we're gonna be stuck at the crevice. Yes. No, we're still rolling. We're still rolling. That was a miracle. I thought we're about to get stuck to the point where we have to go to free cam and yeet the boy at the node grabber, so we're at the bottom as so, and what are these parts? What is this? The... Is this part of the dashboard or the door panel? Looks like the door panel right there, and more of the door panel, and the armrest right here. So some of the parts from the vehicle ended up where we got the whole vehicle right here. So a brief look at this vehicle here. So the vehicle is a big ball of mess. Completely unrecognizable, completely unheard of, and pretty much totally destroyed. Like, completely up in here, folks. So that'll do it with Automation and BBG Drive with the Meta Scepter EX Sleeper Edition. Despite the turbo lag and everything, I mean, this is not too bad of a run the mill sleeper car that some dude will make for YouTube views saying like, Oh, I put this eBay Turbo make at 300 horsepower and got all that turbo lag and everything, but acceleration seems okay. Top speed wise, pretty little overkill for a sub compact hatchback, but overall, average and not really the best of the best. It's a wannabe race car with a high-end, quote-unquote, high-end engine that's just been modified. That's all there is to it. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any videos like this in the future. And also, check out my social media down in the description below. So this is Tries Racing Up, and signing out.